So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can determine the total number of outcomes when we have two or more different independent events. And we kind of did this already in a previous video. We, we learned how to do the sample space by doing things like a tree diagram. And we could count the number of outcomes. And in this case, there was 12. We were flipping a coin and seeing if it was heads or tails. And then we were rolling a die and seeing um, if we got one, two, three, four, five, six. And so we could have heads in these six outcomes, or we could have tails in these six outcomes. And we listed them over here, and we got 12. And then the other example we looked at was flipping a spinner, spinning a spinner rather, and we would get either one, two, three, four, rolling a die and getting one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we had all the outcomes in the box here, and we counted them up in the table, and we figured out there were 24 outcomes. But if we just wanted to know what the number of outcomes would be, there's actually a much quicker way than having to make a table or having to do a tree diagram. And all we do is we look at the first scenario. So if we were spinning the spinner, there would be four different outcomes. And if we rolled the die, there would be six different outcomes. And check out what happens when we multiply four times six. What do we get? We get 24 which is the same as what we got when we listed them all out, did the sample space, and counted out how many different outcomes we had. And if we go back and look at this one, how many outcomes did we have here? Well, there was two, either heads or tails. How many outcomes did we have here? There was six. And when we multiply two times six, we get 12 outcomes. So we don't have to do a tree diagram, and we don't have to do a a box or a, a grid like this to figure out the total number of outcomes. We do have to do it if we want to do some probability calculations um, in this case or so far. Uh, but if we just want to know the total number of outcomes, the total number of outcomes can be found by multiplying the number of possible outcomes from each individual event. So that's all we need to do. Figure out how many outcomes there is in the first event. Figure out how many outcomes there is in the second event. Multiply them together and we have the total number of outcomes. So let's look at a couple of examples here. Here's, here's the first example. So you're gonna have, <clears throat> you have five different shirts, you have three different shorts, and you have two different shoes. So how many different outfits could we wear? Well, the number of outfits. We had five different shirts here, and there was three different shorts and there was two different shoes. So we're gonna just multiply these together. Five times three would be 15. 15 times two would be 30. So there would be 30 different outfits. That would be the sample space. There'd be 30 different um, combinations of shirts, shorts, and shoes that you could wear. Second example, restaurants offering three choices of appetizers, five different main courses, and then three different desserts. So how many different meal combinations would there be? Well, we have three choices for the first one. We have five choices for the second uh, choice, and we have three different choices for desserts. So this would be three times five, which is 15, and 15 times three. There would be 45 different meal combinations if a restaurant was offering three appetizers, five main courses, and three different desserts. So that's a quick way on how you can find the total number of outcomes. Just multiply the number of outcomes that you have for each independent event, and the result will be the total number of outcomes.